Pegasus leads the old-fashioned alpha male, the protector, the provider, the decision maker. Is there still a place for him? Countess Alexandra Tolstoy met her husband Shamil, an Uzbekistani Cossack, on a horse tracking expedition along the Silk Road to China. Shamil was the guide and led the group for thousands of miles over eight months. They fell in love and married in 2003. What attracted you to your husband in the first place? Uh, well, for me, I hadn't, I suppose I'd never analysed, you know, what British men or European men are like, but for me, Shamil was just completely different from everything I'd encountered before, in that, he, you know, he's what a stereotypical man should be, I think. He's very masculine, he's very capable, he's very confident, and he, you know, will always control the situation. And I think it makes for a much better marriage, because we play very separate roles, you know. Uh, there's no conflict over who does what. Well, these are traditional male versions, yeah. aren't they? Are these in short supply? Do you find <laughs> many men like that in this country? Well, when, I, when you came to England, everybody said to me, wow, he's a real man. And I also, to me, it was very fact that he's very connected to nature. And I think actually in England, there's the, big, the connection, one of the big reasons why this mass Asian happened is the urbanisation of England, that so many people are based in cities which is essentially a very unmasculine environment, isn't it? You're not connected with the outdoors, and, and those are traditionally very masculine virtues. And what do you find unattractive about them, or...? I think one of the things I find most unattractive is what you see in all male idols today is vanity. I just think it's so unattractive and unmasculine. They wear more designer clothes than women, so I just find that extraordinary, completely perverted masculinity. <laughs> What about um, sort of old-fashioned male courtesy, gallantry, opening doors, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff? Uh, no, that, I that seems to have died out of it. Yeah, well, actually, no, Shamil's very good about that. Oh, Shamil is, but, <laughs> but of course, he, he is the masculine man. Yeah, I think it's very sad, and yet... Endangered and, species. Yeah. <laughs> but I think lots of women are very greedy. They want everything. They want to be equal, and yet they still want to be feminine, and they still want to be looked after, and... And, yeah, I think it's unfair. <laughs> Where does this leave um, other traditional male virtues like reticence, like um, like stoicism, like uh, yeah, I competition think it... and uh, aggression? I suppose. Where does it where does it leave all that? Well, I think it's very difficult because men have been forced to subdue these very instinctive, natural emotions. I mean, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in a hundred years. I, I cannot believe that it's it's normal to remove one well, completely natural instincts in a man. I and mean, I can't believe that it it would be good for society, good for the family, good for business, good for the economy, good for everything. I think we shouldn't meddle with nature. You think that's what we're doing? Yeah, definitely. Since the beginning of time, the male of the species has always been the stronger of the sexes. But now, even Mother Nature is in conspiracy against us. With sharply falling sperm counts and rapid advances in IVF and genetic engineering, men could be in danger of becoming completely obsolete. I think everybody should be worried about men. I really do. If women really understood how men felt, they would act differently. It's not very clear to me whether this trend towards um, feminization of society will just continue careering along in the way that it is. In my view, it is so socially disadvantageous, it amounts to a kind of social suicide, if you like. And I think that right now, men are in a terrible position of not knowing where they stand. And I think women are at fault, because women are not giving a man a place to stand. And I think there's already some signs that women, especially younger generation of girls, are thinking that they don't wish to negate the progress that women have made, they don't wish to go back to the kitchen, they don't wish to have jobs and so on, they wish to be the equals of men um, in the public sphere. But nevertheless, I think there is a feeling that, you know, things have gone too far. Girls know that the world is going their way. Boys can sense it, even if they don't know why it's happening or what it's going to mean for them. For all of human history, it's been a man's world. Well, here and now, it isn't. Men are going to have to be less like men and more like women. And even that may not be enough. 
Our fate may be that of male bees, drones in the hive, tolerated if we're lucky, but marginalised, despised, good for only one thing and then disposed of. And even that isn't essential. Maybe we're going to need that stiff upper lip after all. Men are quite right to feel marginalised at the moment. Well, I think it was a very incoherent programme. I mean, it started off with this strange word, democracy, which is a kind of horrible hybrid of Greek and Latin. I think what he meant is gyn gynocracy. But in fact, you know, we haven't got that either, and I don't think any, any of us would want that. And I, and I, I don't think he... I mean, you could, you could just as easily make a programme which says that Tesco has taken over the world. As, you know, it would be as coherent as, as this programme. What he did was use, use statistics very selectively, use things like the fact that women live longer. Well, they always have. You know, historically, if women survive childbirth, and they tend to live longer than men. That's not new. Manufacturing industry has declined. Men's jobs have declined. But that's a feature of late 20th century it, capitalism. It's an evolutionary process that there are, by virtue of the fact that we don't build ships anymore, we don't you know, do a lot of heavy engineering, that, that it's changed. That is an evolution rather than any kind of imposition. And I think grey matter has replaced industrial matter, and I think it's fantastic. I think it's great that women are, 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 are becoming equal to men, and in some areas, dangerously so, becoming more equal. And the, the question is... But so why is, dangerously so? Because I think that there is an issue here. I think there's an issue is, you know, are we talking about equality, which is what feminism was originally about, or are we talking about superiority? Are we talking about being under Jones' stiletto heel, for example, or are we talking about walking side by side as equal, as partners, and respecting but the differences be, between the genders? But, but we talk about statistics in the programme, but there's lots of other statistics as well. You know, that only 2% of women are on the board of companies that are mm. in the FTSE 100 that actually look at the judiciary, look, in fact, at, you know, at Parliament. In a sense, there's a long way to go to tip that balance. Well, I think there's discrimination in two areas. I think discrimination against men and fathers in the home, and still discrimination against women in the workplace. And I think the intelligent debate that needs to be had needs to identify where the prejudices and discriminations in society exist. And if we can have that, if we can accept that and have an intelligent debate, then that's got to be to the benefit of both genders. Sure. Well, I think what this tells you is two things, basically. One is that people who are privileged don't actually recognise how privileged they are. Um, it's only the people who are below actually look up and see that someone like M Michael Burke is tremendously privileged. And also that there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's always a kind of appetite for misogyny, because it seems to me this program was a kind of very emotional gut response of a man of a certain age, ignoring lots and lots of evidence. For example, um, if women are running the world, how is it that in rape trials, there's less than 1 in 20 rapes reported to the police as now, it now results in a conviction. There's virtually no punishment for rape in this country anymore. How is it that only 16 years ago, jo uh, when John Major became Prime Minister, his first cabinet had no women in it at all? But Jones, fall, Jones falling into the same mistake, she's failing to accept that there is misandry and there's misogyny. And I think the intelligent debate with intelligence feminists would actually support what I'm saying. Both of you, thank you very much. Thank you.